Hello everyone and welcome to Power Hour. I'm Laura Rogers and this is Joelle Jobson. And today we're going to be teaching you about the new Microsoft List templates that have approvals built into them. So it is part of the template and it's really interesting. It's got um, some settings that we'll go over and we'll show you how to use it. Not sure if it'll take a whole hour. Here's the stinger. Alrighty, so let's get right to it. Um, first of all, if this is your first time joining Power Hour, um, this is a we have a lively live chat going on over in Teams. And wherever you're watching this, you'll be able to click to a link to request to join and we invite you into Microsoft Teams. And I'll go ahead and show you that really quick, what it looks like on my screen. And um, we'll also be, if you've already requested it and you've already um, joined, you've already gotten the little exception email saying that you have been invited, then all you have to do is just go to Teams and switch over to our tenant. So let me go ahead and uh, move this over here. So this is the Power Hour channel and let me get Joelle back on the screen here. I think I turned you off whenever you were not here. Last week. There we go. Um, here is where we're chatting. So here is the general channel over in the Power Hour uh, team that you'll be in. And then we have a tab over here for every different every week. We create a new tab. Just we have the past few weeks on here. And then when you go to the tab, then you click this little chat button to take to pop out this chat panel and there's everybody chatting and asking questions and it's really fun. So um, you can click open and actually watch the video and then chat with us. Okay, so I have um, one of these lists that I've created the template from and then what I'm going to do is I'll show you how I built it and I'll build a new one and then we'll go over just kind of some of the functionality in here. But basically what you're going to get with these templates that have approvals built in is just this, look at this, this little extra column here um, with the ability to send an approval request directly from the list. And then it actually uses a Microsoft flow behind the scenes and sends it to the people. So it's a pop-up that's built into your list that's built in in a column in the default view. And it gives you the ability to just kick that off right from the list without having to create a flow or set anything up. And it just goes. So this is what we're going to be going over how to set that up. So what I'm going to do is I'll go over to our little Power Hour site. And this is the site that all of you have access to. So maybe you'll be able to try it out too. I'm not sure how this functionality works yet for external users. So we'll be able to maybe test that out once we see what it looks like just kind of normally. Okay, so I click new and I'm just creating a new list. So that's all I'm doing. And what you'll notice is that we have a few new list templates here and they're always adding new templates. So um, we'll see, you'll see the travel request one that you've always seen here, but you'll also see travel requests with approvals. And then you have content scheduler and content scheduler with approvals. So those are the two uh, list templates that we'll be going over today. So first of all, I'll just create a list with the travel requests with approvals and just click use template. All right, so then it's telling me this is the name of my list. I'll just go ahead and click create. And you could, of course, change the name of your list and give it a description anytime you create a list. All right, so here's my list. And then you'll notice that it's got an approval status column. You'll, that's the first thing you'll see off the bat. And then I'll go ahead and just create a travel request. Um, let's see, test one, I'm not very creative. And I'll put my name in here. A lot of these fields aren't required. A lot of these fields really don't have anything to do with the way the functionality of the, you know, the approval process. So you really don't need to fill out all this stuff. So I'm going to put um, I'm going to go to Honolulu. It's got very specific destinations in these uh, in these location columns. And I'll go on just go there for a couple of days. I won't, my jet lag will not even be 
um, over by the time I come back home from this trip to Hawaii <laughs> that I'm going on. Like, what is that, tomorrow? <laughs> and then, um, let's see, pick airline, blah, blah, blah. Okay, so it doesn't really matter. I'll click save. And then now that you can see there's an item here, now you'll see what's in this approval status column. So that is where you're going to be able to use this new little functionality, which gives you a, it's got an icon telling you that it's going to be a pop-up When you click the button and there's your request approval. So I just, I just created the list. I don't have to do anything else. And I can immediately just start creating items and having approvals on them. And that, that little built-in interface is really nice, right? Okay. So then it already tells me the name. So it just takes whatever I created as the title of the item and puts it as the name here in the pop-up. And I'll just say, um, Joelle, I'm going to send this to you. I think this is your little fake account here in this little fake tenant. And then so you can send it to multiple people if you want. And if you put more than one person here, you'll be able to turn off the request or response from all um, all approvers. So if you turn that toggle it off, then that means you just need one person to approve. And then there are your details where you can just type whatever you want and click submit. Now it says that it's submitting and it says you can close this window. And so it's really just at this point, it's up to you to close the window and what's going to happen at this point. So the person is going to get a pop-up in Teams, just one of those approval pop-ups. They're going to get a notification in Teams, and then it's going to let them know that just it looks just like a regular approval looks in Teams. Let me see. Um, it'll it'll pop up in your chat. So I just sent it to Joelle. Um, she'll see something pop up in her chat, and then it takes a couple of minutes. So that's kind of one of the things to keep in mind about this is that it. Um, it's still just going to say not submitted for a couple of minutes. And so now look at that. It just changed to requested. That's because the workflow is running behind the scenes. So let's see. And when I click on it now. Okay, so now it says it tells me the information about this approval. I just saw the pop up. Um, in Teams come up because um, like if you're logged in as one of the users that um, you send it to and then Joelle did you happen to approve this yet yeah yeah you did it says approved by Joelle so that's what the pop-up was that I just got was letting me know that Joelle approved it and it shows in my little activity here so it says final status approved final status approved and so this person hasn't responded, but it doesn't matter because I said that I didn't need a request or response from everybody. I just needed at least one person to approve it. So then it has a link to the thing that you're approving. And then it tells me all the details. I can even save this as a PDF. And that's going to be, that looks like that's a new functionality that is built into all the approvals. I don't think this save as PDF is specific to just this built in approvals in the list. It's probably part of just we did a whole power hour one time about those built in approvals in teams. So um, but that's that's just a new button that they've added there. So when I save this as a PDF, um, it just actually gave me a little message saying that it downloaded it. Let me see. Let's see what that looks like real quick. Yeah, it gives it the name of whatever the request is and just it looks exactly like the screen I was just looking at. So that is, says approved now. So it said requested when it was waiting for people to approve and now it says approved. And now um, I can see that there's another one that somebody's created. And I can look at the existing one and I can see the history there. So those are the basics of just how it works. It's just got um, the functionality that sends them a pop-up in Teams and it also shows in the approvals panel. So let's see, I have this other fake user. Let's see, well, let's just go look at my, I'll go to my manage my flows. And if you go to the approvals tab over on the left in manage my flows, let me zoom in on this, then you'll be able to see that those exact approvals. So it's all just built in. 
to the regular, just any approvals that you might send. So here's one that I sent and um, it shows there in my sent items and then there's my history. So again, they're all just gonna be tied together with um, any other type of approvals you might do with the approvals action in a flow or with approvals in the ones that are built into Teams and the approvals app in Teams. this requested so when I click the little pop-up where it says requested it actually shows me that it was approved it just whatever is going on in that flow behind the scenes the next action in the flow is to change this approval status and that's the part that hasn't happened yet so unfortunately it's just something oh there it goes yay go ahead and Oh, applying changes will cancel your request. Oh, that is interesting. I like that. Okay. So if something has been approved already, they don't want you to be able to make edits to it. And they're letting you know that it's not going to be considered approved anymore. If you make changes, this is similar to kind of what exists in documents with that. Remember that old document approval process that used to be built in Joelle? Where you could it was like the one that was built into word and it would kind of do something like that where it would uh, if you made changes to the document it would remove the like the signatures the little digital signatures from it yeah that's that same concept so that's a great idea i'm glad it does that you can't just go get something approved and then just make a bunch of changes to it so i'm going to go apply my changes and now look at that the approval status changes back to not submitted so if i make changes after it's been approved i have to go get it approved again Okay, so now I am requesting it again. All right, so that wraps up the very interesting built-in uh, list templates that have built-in approvals, uh, testing and demo. And it's a brand, brand new feature, so new that a bunch of you don't have it rolled out to your tenants yet. And also kind of a little rough around the edges. Um, but, you know, you get to kind of see what to expect and what it does and what it doesn't do. But it's going to be great for those just simple, just end users that maybe are brand new to SharePoint that just need to be able to build, you know, do something pretty quick and simple and have that built in approval process and not have to call IT, not have to call you and just have them be able to do that and have something they can do on their own without the need for any complexity. So um, that wraps up Power Hour. Um, you can always check our schedule page to see. I'll go ahead and share um, my screen again. Um, to find out when the next Power Hour is going to be, you go to iwmentor.com and go to schedule. You can see that we have um, our live online um, class five day class is going to be next week. So we won't be having power hour. So you all check out that this is going to be very intensive advanced course. And, uh, it's just live online in teams with me. So check that out. And if not, let's see, I'll see you all, um, ultimate members on the fourth for our office hours meeting. And then the next power hour is going to be April 12th. And thanks to all of you who signed up for our free, Power Apps weekend this past weekend. It was a lot of fun, went really well. We had a lot of people complete the course and um, I sent out a survey to you all to see what you thought afterwards. So let me know if y'all have any questions about that. I'm gonna be in Vegas at uh, April 30th is the workshop and then April 30th, no, May 1st is the workshop. It's the Microsoft 365 conference. It's got workshops April 30th and May 1st and the conference itself is May second through fourth so hopefully i'll see you or see you there and then october is the power platform conference in vegas so hopefully i'll see you there too and that wraps it up i will see you in the next power hour thanks everybody for coming bye joelle